in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, the Father of mercies, be with all of you. Welcome to all of you, especially the family and friends and our brothers, all those who are here to honor our brother Carl as we accompany him during these sacred rites. You come here with grateful hearts for a life full of all different kinds of contributions to the order, to the church, and in his relationships with all of us. We come with deep appreciation for the opportunity we have to accompany him as well as one another as we place our faith, hope, and trust in the one who calls us into new life. Through the waters of baptism, our brother Carl was immersed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On that same day, Carl was clothed with Christ. When Christ comes again, may Carl be clothed in glory. In his journey of life, Carl joined himself to the Augustinian community, embracing our rule of life, promising to walk with us in one mind and heart intent upon God. Carl, as a priest of the church, lived and proclaimed the gospel of Christ, offering nourishment to his fellow servants in word and sacrament. Let us pray. God of blessings, source of all holiness, the voice of your spirit has drawn countless men and women to follow Jesus Christ and to bind themselves to you with ready will and loving heart. Look with mercy on your servant, Carl, who sought to fulfill his vows to you, and grant him the reward promised to all good and faithful servants. May he rejoice in the company of the saints, and with them praise you forever. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On the mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Oh 
There is one thing I ask of the Lord that I long for. All of my days with God to be dwelling, gazing with awe at the beauty of God and in A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. In this tent we groan, longing to be further clothed with our heavenly habitation. Yes, while we are in this tent, we groan and are weighed down. We do not wish to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a first installment. So we are always courageous, Although we know that a while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Now the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I must say, in my 44 years and 11 months of preparing, presiding, and preaching at funerals, I have never seen anything like Karl Gersbach's instructions and requests for his funeral. Never. It is theologically sophisticated, liturgically proper, and the readings, all three of them, Carl's inner life, his psycho-spirituality, is being revealed in a marvelously appropriate way. Carl, in the instruction, says, no eulogy, no personal stories. Focus on liturgy and on the readings. Emphasize this, all human beings, me included, are looking forward to something better than life in this world. The bread of life and the resurrection of Jesus are foretastes and promise of the better life as we live, however, in this world, this tent, a tent uh, on this earthly campground with these fellow human earthly campers, which is why we find ourselves frequently groaning and moaning and complaining, and we sometimes come across as unhappy and cranky. We want more. We are restless for God and for the reign of God. In a few minutes, after greeting us, Tony will invite us to lift up our hearts in thanks and praise to celebrate God as we celebrate this funeral of Karl Gersbach. And we will say it is right and just. Tony will then go on. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation. But is it? Is that true? Is it right and just, our duty and salvation, to thank and praise God in the context of Karl Gersbach's funeral? I must say, I've been thinking about this for the past three years, ever since I was offered and accepted provincial responsibilities. And after three years of thinking about this, and especially the last week, I do believe it is right and just and salvific. Because in Karl Gersbach, the mighty, the almighty, holy as his name, has done great things, especially in this last six days. Allow me to be more specific. 
On January the 8th, 1935, God's creative power gave Carl and Marie Gersbach a son, Carl. He was a baby, much like any other baby. St. Augustine talks about babies. The only innocent feature in babies is the weakness of their frames. The minds of infants are far from innocent. I have watched and experienced for myself the jealousy of a small child. A baby might not even be able to speak, yet he glares with livid fury at his fellow nursling. If this is to be regarded as innocence, this refusal to tolerate a rival for a richly abundant fountain of milk at a time when the other child stands in greatest need of it and depends on it for its very life. It is. And what was Carl like as a baby? That selfish, jealous, crabby baby, but cute and deeply loved, was taken to St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Hyde Park. On March the 3rd, 1935, in the waters of baptism, Karl Gerstbach began his 86-year Christian pilgrimage. He began the process of putting on the perfect man, who is Jesus Christ. Seven years later, as World War II raged in Europe and in the Pacific, as Karl, from his culture, taught, was taught to hate Japanese people, and a great mistrust for Germans, downright hatred for Nazis by his culture. He was seven years old, and Karl was taught the purpose of his life as he prepared for his first communion, to know, love, and serve God in this world, and to be happy with God in the next. Strange words and strange ideas for a nation at a time of war, for a young boy trying to figure things out. But that young boy, nourished by the word of God and by the bread of life, was intrigued. Later, Carl was confirmed in a vision of life in a church that looked forward to the day prophesied by Isaiah, a vision of the whole human family, together with God, at a great banquet. That confirmed faith led Carl to serve as an Augustinian priest at Mendel High School, at Tallentine College and Villanova University, as Secretary of the Order of St. Augustine, as Assistant General of the Order, as Provincial Secretary, Provincial, and most recently, at the request of Bernie Siena, as the Prior of St. Johnstone Friary. Carl was also a pastor and a hospital chaplain. Those of us who hold office know of a great struggle in which we regularly engage. The struggle to overcome, or better yet, to control our infantile selfishness, narcissism, and pettiness. The Spirit calls us to lose the office given us for the well-being of others and of the world. The flesh enjoys power and privilege and possessions. And Carl knew that struggle. Carl engaged that struggle, sometimes successfully, other times not so much. But Carl engaged the struggle. It is right and just to give praise and thanks it is right and just that we give thanks and praise to God for Carl's willingness to serve and his efforts throughout the whole course of his life to serve as Jesus served. As he prepared for First Communion in 1942, Carl learned that the purpose of his life was to know, to know God and know lots of other stuff as well. And that delighted him. 
St. Augustine Seminary introduced Carl to serious study, including the study of Latin. It is right, as we thank God, that Dr. Gerstbach took the Catholic Augustinian tradition of study, thought, and learning, life of the mind. He took it seriously. Having just moved Carl's library from Johnstone Friary and another part of his library from Crown Point to the new provincial office, I can attest to the extent and the quality of Carl's library, which includes five Latin, four Greek, three German, two French, and five Spanish dictionaries. He also has two English dictionaries. There are books by Greek and Roman philosophers, patristic and medieval theologians and canonists, and by contemporary thinkers of Europe and America. So far, I have found five copies of the rule, three in Latin, two, three of the constitutions, and innumerable copies of Confessions and City of God. Like his 16th century predecessor, Onofrio Pandinio, Karl Gerstbach was an antiquitatis heluo, pater omnis historiae, that is, a glutton for antiquity, father of all history. And more to my own taste, I was delighted to find the works of Karl Rahner had an important place in Karl's library. If I might be personal a moment. I returned from Leuven in July 1983 with my STL. Carl was at lunch at St. Clair of Montefalco Rectory, and so was I. He asked me if I passed, what I wrote about, what grade I received, and how many footnotes my license thesis contained. And so I told him. And then Carl asked me if I was proud of my work and if I would do the doctorate. I said, yes, I am proud of my work and I hope to finish the doctorate. And then he said rather wistfully and sadly and lovingly, I am the only one in this province who understands your world. He said that, I believe, with a bit of respect and even affection. I am the only one in the province who understands your world. At that lunch, I think I learned something about Carl's experience of being appreciated and valued and wanted, and lack thereof. Exitus and reditus, as we all learned in catechism class, in the beginning we come forth from the God who is love, and we are invited to return to the God who is love. What they forgot to tell us is that it takes a while to appreciate such a mysterious truth. And for some, it takes longer than others. The prophetic vision of Isaiah and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus gives us a promise and a hope, and the bread of life nourishes on our journey. But we live on this planet, in this history. To use Paul's images, we live in a tent, and we're weighted down by the events of history. We're weighted down by the people with whom we share this planet in our lives. And our lives, for some of us, and for most of us as we age, the limits of our own bodies cause us to groan, to complain, and to whine, to never be happy or satisfied. And with our Augustinian emphasis, with, I'm sorry, with our American emphasis on independence and accomplishment, and our Midwest Augustinian emphasis on practicality and the immediate, we sometimes fail to see that God is inviting us 
into ever-deepening friendship, trust, hope, surrender, and divine love. Those of us that spent much time with Carl know well why he selected that second reading. It was his reality. While he believed that he had received the first installment of the life of God in his baptism, Carl longed for much more. About two years ago, Carl gave me his car keys. He called me up, said, I need to see you. I'm no longer safe driving. You need to come and get the keys. I took a very deep breath. And then I decided to do taking of the keys as best I knew how to do it. I asked him what it meant to him, what does it mean to you, Carl, to quit driving, to give me your keys, and to become more dependent on others. We spoke about 90 minutes. Many of you have had the same kind of meandering conversation with Carl. Carl spoke of diminishment, loss, sadness, fear, and grief. And Carl told me that he wanted to die two years ago. Now, as province treasurer, I see all the bills for medical treatment. I saw Carl's bills and read of his treatments, and I learned two truths. Carl was not ready to die. And the second, God was not finished with Carl. And here is why it is right and just that we give thanks and praise to God this evening. In these last two years of Carl's long and highly accomplished life, God and Carl worked together. While living in this tent, on this campground, with these fellow campers, complete with much groaning and complaining, prayer and divine grace, six days ago, when the doctor and Mike O'Connor and Tony Pizzo asked if Carl wanted the pacemaker that he might live or if he were ready to entrust himself into the embrace of God, Carl chose to surrender himself to the God of love. Carl has read Carl Rahner's final option. Carl Gersbeck in this last week of his life, had the freedom, the gentleness, and the trust to breathe his life into the hands of our loving God. As his Lord said before him, after 86 years of Christian life, Karl Gersbach could finally say, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. God created us to serve, to know, and to love God and each other, and to be loved by God in this world, and to find the fullness of happiness in the next. By the grace of God and the response of Karl Gersbach, Karl's life is now fulfilled. And for that, we lift up our hearts and we give praise and thanks to God.
You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. My brothers and sisters, these words of our Holy Father Augustine are never truer than when one of our brothers has found that rest. Our re religious profession, like our baptism, finds its fulfillment in the ultimate giving back of our life, encountering for the first time that one for whom our hearts long. It is in our remembering and in our longing that we give voice once more to our brother's profession. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. In the year of the Lord, 1953, on the 10th day of September, I, Carl A. Gersbach, led by the Holy Spirit, declare my intention to follow Jesus Christ more closely and to give a fuller expression to my baptismal consecration. Therefore, calling upon the Virgin Mary and our Holy Father Augustine, I give myself to God and unite myself to God's will by the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience in the order of St. Augustine and according to the rule of our Holy Father. I wish to continue my quest for God together with my brothers and to serve the people of God in community life and mutual sharing of goods. For the love of God and in the presence of my brothers, I promise obedience to the prior general of the order. I pray that the Lord will enable me to live faithfully with you in unity of love and have one mind and heart intent upon God. Amen. We pray, Lord, protect this servant of yours, our brother Carl. That the judgment seat of your son be yourself his great reward. Give him the joy of vows fulfilled, made perfect in your love. May he rejoice in the communion of your saints praise you forever in their company for we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen invite you to please stand as we continue our prayer together my brothers and sisters Jesus Christ who is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for us as church we approach at this time with humble hearts we are confident that the Lord hears the voices of those who trust in him as we join our prayers to one another let our response be, hear our prayer. In baptism, Carl received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our brother Carl was nourished at the table of the Savior. Lord, welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our brother, Carl, spent his life following Jesus, 
poor, chaste, and obedient. Lord, count him among all the holy men and women who sing in your courts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Lord, show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Carl seek comfort and consolation. Lord, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Carl. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the, in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray also for the intentions of all of our brothers who are in the health care facilities at Crown Point, Montero, and in Providence Health Care in Toronto. For them, for their intentions, for hope, for courage, for our brothers who are their caregivers and all those who help to keep them comfortable, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We ask your mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice of our service offered for the soul of Carl, our Augustinian brother, and your servant priest, may now bring pardon to him who devoutly offered sacrifice to you in the church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Please remain standing, and if you feel more comfortable sitting, please do so. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night Jesus was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Augustine, St. Monica, St. Rita, St. Charles, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and all those who share in leadership of the church as well as the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your faithful servant, Carl, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in the resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To all of our departed sisters and brothers too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
with one mind and one heart, we now pray that for a unity that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, do not look on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. We turn to one another in a relatively safe way and offer one another a sign of peace. Peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, Christ Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of God.
one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will flesh for the life of the world and if you eat of this bread you shall live forever you shall live forever and I will raise you up and I will flesh of the Son of Man, and drink of his blood, and drink of his blood, you shall not have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will
Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Carl, our Augustinian brother, and your servant, priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for our brother Carl. And now we come to our last farewell. There is sadness in our parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Carl again and enjoy his friendship and his narratives of history that can go on and on and on. But we shall be together and although our congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, we console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Quietly, peacefully, in you quietly peacefully bring him home to you in our weakness we have strayed drifting far from you in our goodness steady us, light our path to you. Quietly, peacefully, may he rest in you. Quietly, signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful God, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Carl forever. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Carl, 
May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Tomorrow morning, we will have Carl burial at Holy Sepulchre Cemetery at uh, 10 a.m., correct, Michael? So for those who wish to attend, uh, we will meet at the uh, interment chapel as you walk, as you uh, drive in, go all the way through that uh, central road until you get, if you uh, face the chapel, and then we will more than likely be in St. Patrick. We're always in St. Patrick, but that's okay, that's good, Michael. Uh, and uh, we'll have our uh, final prayers as well as the actual interment in the plot tomorrow morning. We want to uh, thank the family. We're so happy that you could be with us and his friends. Uh, thank you, Jim. He would be very proud of you in uh, preaching at his funeral. Our musicians, brothers, you for being here, and um, all of our uh, brothers who helped out and helped to make this a uh, uh, a lovely mass. And once again, we're always grateful to Mike Heaney and his staff for accompanying us. We walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear. Of him who spoke has not ever spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod. Yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are in full and endless sight. We walk by faith and not by sight, no fair gracious word we hear. Of him who spoke as none ever spoke, but we believe him
Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Estes Nostra Salve. A te clamamos, Exules Filipe, A te suspiramos, Gementes et Mentes, in art lacrima un vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, ilos suos, misericordes oculos, ad nos contente. Et viene sum, benedictum fructum ventris sui, no quis, os hoc exilium, os tende. O clemens, o pia, o lucis, virgo maria. Eternal Respirant to Carl, may he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration here together is ended. Our celebration continues for eternity, and we continue with the peace and love of Christ. Thank you, Thank you for being here.